Okay, today we're going to talk about displaying data and distribution. So let's start with a few definitions. Um, how do we define statistics? Statistics is the science of collecting, analyzing, and drawing conclusions from data. So data are just the numbers. Statistics is the actually at actual analysis of it. So what is the population? To define the population, population is the entire collection of individuals or objects about which information is desired. A sample is a subset of the population selected for a study in some prescribed manner. So while we would love to have information about everybody in the population, uh, most often that is not feasible. Therefore, we need to take a small subset, a sample. So to define a variable, a variable, just like in any math class, is any characteristic whose value may change from one individual to another. So variable is anything that changes, could change. Data, data are the actual observations on single variable or simultaneously on two or more variables. So data are the numbers itself. Statistics is the analysis of the numbers. So uh, here gives you a visual representation of uh, what we do in statistics. Um, we want to know about a population. If we could find out all the information about the population, sample everybody, or ask everybody, we would love to, but often that's not feasible. So we take a small subset, a good representative sample. We collect data from the sample. We analyze that data in order to make an inference regarding the population. And if you take a good enough sample, you should be able to make an inference to the population. Types of variables, uh, we have categorical. Categorical variable could also be called qualitative variable. It identifies basic uh, differentiating characteristics of the population. So example uh, would be eye color, nationality, anything that is a category. So non-number, so categorical variable is a category, non-number. Numerical variables, our numbers, they are quantitative. There's a quantity. There are observations or measurements that we can take that take on numerical values. And it makes sense to average these. Okay, I can average, I can add them together. And we have two types of numerical variables, either discrete or continuous. Discrete are listable sets of values. And these are usually counts of information. They can't include the decimals between. So example of this would be like shoe size, number of children. So even though shoe size can be a decimal, we typically have either eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half. And notice we don't have um, any of the itty bitty decimals in between. A number of children, okay, you can't have half a child, you have one, two, three. So discrete, think of it as counts. Can't include all the itty bitty decimals in between. It can be decimals. You just can't connect the lines in between. Continuous numerical data is data that can take on any value in the domain of the variable. And these are usually measurements. So think of this as, yes, I can connect the line between the data points. Okay, so example would be weight. Example would be height, voltage, okay, anything that you measure. Weight can be to the tenths, hundredths, and even then there's numbers in between, right? Because I can just extend the decimal. So classification by the number of variables. Again, we could have univariate data, which represents a single characteristic of the population, uni, root word, single. Bivariate data that describes two characteristics of the population. And multivariate um, data that describes more than two characteristics. Uh, so some practice identifying the following variables. Uh, if we have the income of adults in your city, so is that numerical or category? Categorical, that is a number, so that is numerical. And it is also continuous. I can have many possibilities if I were to extend decimals out to tenths, hundredths, thousands, et cetera. What about the color of M&M candy selected at random from a bag? So color is a category, so that's categorical. 
What about the number of speeding tickets each student in AP statistics has received? Number is a number, so that would be numerical. And again, it's discrete because you can't have half a ticket. It's either one, two, three, so forth. The area code of an individual. This one is actually categorical. So area code is tricky. While it is a number, notice that I can't put one area code on a number line bigger or less than another area code. Um, so that number is actually representing an area. It actually has no value on a number line. Okay, so an area code that is larger number wise does not mean that there's more people in there, et cetera. Okay, so area code is a tricky, it is categorical. What about the birth weights of female babies born at a large hospital over the course of a year? Well, weight is a number, so it is numerical and it is continuous because it could be any possible itty bitty decimal. So anything that you can measure is uh, often, most often, a numerical continuous. So what about temperature outside? That is numerical continuous, anything you measure. What about a jelly bean flavor? That is categorical. Shoe length, shoe length. I measure the shoe, that would be numerical continuous. So notice the difference between um, shoe length is something you measure, numerical continuous. Shoe size, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, that would be numerical but discrete. Okay, I can't include a bit of decimal for shoe size. But length, yes. Hair color, hair color would be categorical. It is a category. So graphs for categorical data. So I have a bar graph. It is used for categorical data, which means I need categories, not numbers on a number line. The bars do not touch. Categorical variable is typical, typically on the horizontal axis, but again, it could be vertical as well. And to describe a bar graph, we comment on which occurred the most often or least option. Common mistake, okay, bar graphs do not touch um, because we do not have a number line. One, electronics is not related to medical in any way. Uh, the bars need to be separated. And uh, you may make a, a double bar graph or a segmented bar graph for bivariate categorical data sets. So here's an example of a double bar graph. Again, notice we could be separating um, male, female. Here's also an example of a horizontal bar graph, again, where your axis is um, on the left-hand side. And notice in a double bar graph, um, your two bars um, are together because these both relate to tennis, but tennis does not relate to swimming. So look at pie graph. It's used for categorical data. And to make a pie graph or a circle graph, uh, we take the proportion and we multiply it by 360 degrees and that will tell us how many degrees to make our little pie slice. And we do this by using a protractor. You can mark off each part. So describe, to describe, we comment on which occurred the most often or least often. So graphs for numerical. So when I have numbers, one option is a dot plot. It is used with numerical data, either discrete or continuous. It is made by putting dots or X's on a number line. So notice you need to label the axes. What do these numbers represent? Number of children and family. I need to put the unit here, one, two, three, I'm counting by ones. And we can also make a comparative dot plot by using the same axis for multiple groups if needed. Stem plots are used with univariate numerical data. They must have a key so that we know how to read numbers. And you can split stems when you have a long list of numbers. So notice here on the second one, um, notice we have 
uh, two stems of two because this would be read 21, 25, 26, so forth. So notice it's called a stem plot because you always start with the number in the middle. Okay, you always start with the number in the middle. That is your stem. So if we're going to read this left stem plot for evening students, uh, this left one is representative of a comparative one. So evening students would start always with the stem. We'd have 20 as a data point, 25. Also for day students, again, start with the two. We have 28, 32, etc. Also always make sure to have a key so that I know how to read it. Two uh, horizontal line zero equals 20 because sometimes it could represent a decimal. So always make sure to have a key. Always make sure to look at the key if you are reading a stem plot. Always make sure to have a title. Okay, don't just put numbers. What do these numbers represent? Here they are ages. Again, this left one are evening students and day students. If you are doing a comparative, you should have uh, two titles. So here's an example. The following data are prices per ounce for various brands of dandruff shampoo at a local grocery store. Uh, can we make a stem plot uh, with this data? So first we need a title. This is talking about dandruff shampoo and prices per ounce. We need a key. How are we gonna read it? And notice here um, how, how you make your stem depends on your numbers. So notice we have nothing above a zero. So we don't wanna just make our stem a zero because otherwise we're just gonna have every number on the right hand side. And the whole point of a graphical display is to make it nice and pretty to look at. Uh, so here notice um, I have zero point as everything. So we don't wanna include that as a stem. But notice we have tenths places options of one, two, three, four, five. Um, so here's our stem plot as such. So uh, 0 0.32, notice we put 0 0.3 and we're only putting one digit on the right hand side. So notice um, sometimes a stem um, may contain more than one number as shown here. So another example here, we have uh, tobacco use in G-rated movies versus tobacco use in Disney movies. So how do we make a comparative stem plot here? So again, we're gonna have title, tobacco, other movies, tobacco, Disney. We're gonna make our stem based on how many numbers we have. So notice here, we have a very a large range. We have one digit all the way to three digit numbers. Um, but notice my stem here, you don't have to go in order. Um, I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But notice I don't have any number with a stem of uh, 10 something, so 100 something. Uh, so notice it is okay to skip this as long as you have no data points. So I did a stem of 11 for 117 and so forth. So it is okay to skip as long as you don't have a data point. But again, how do we read the numbers on the left for Tobacco Disney? Always start with the stem. So this would represent the number two, the number six, number nine, and then 11, 23. Always start with the stem. So histograms are used with numerical data. Bars touch on histograms. So this is a big common mistake between bar graph. The histogram deals with numerical data. So you're going from zero to numbers on a number line, okay, which is why they uh, touch because they are connected. The left is lower than the right hand side. You have two types, a uh, discrete where the bars are centered over discrete values or continuous where bars cover a class or an interval. And most often than not, histogram is gonna deal with an interval of numbers. So zero to 10, how many students? 10 to 20, how many students? And for comparative histograms, use two separate graphs with the same scale on the horizontal axis. So would a histogram uh, be a good graph for the number of pieces of gum chewed per day by AP stat students? Why are we not? Well, pieces of gum is either gonna be zero, one, two, three, so forth. You're probably not gonna be able to chew that many pieces of gum in a day. So histogram probably wouldn't have enough different values um, in order to make one. So probably not the best. 
but would a histogram be a good graph for the fastest speed driven by stat students? Well, fastest speed, everybody could have a different answer, right? So it might be good to have um, a, a histogram for that because some people's answers could be very, very different. Maybe it would be zero, they haven't driven at all. Um, but who knows, hopefully not going over the speed limit. But a, a lot more options uh, as an answer to this question. So types or shapes of distributions. So we have what's called symmetrical. It refers to data in which both sides are more or less the same when the graph is folded vertically down the middle. Uh, this is what we call bell-shaped, and there's a special type. It has a center mound with two sloping tails. Um, we'll eventually talk about, if you continue with statistics, talking about a special bell-shaped curve called the normal curve. But as long as the left side matches the right side, it is symmetrical. Uniform is another type of graph, which refers to data in which every class has equal or approximately equal frequency. So notice our bar graph here has all about the same uh, heights of bars. So again, nothing, no real data is exactly equal, but if it's approximately, it would be uniform. Think of this as kind of like uniform shirts. Every, everybody looks the same. So think of like military. Right skewed or left skewed refers to the data in which one side, the tail, is longer than the other side. And the direction of skewness is on the side of the longer tail. And I always like to say, just think opposite. If most of the data is on the left, it is right skewed. If most of the data on, is on the right, it is left skewed. And that's actually because um, if most of the data is on the left, your mean is being pulled right. If most of your data is on the right, your average is being pulled left by those lower values. Okay, so think opposite. So bimodal or multimodal refers to data in which two or more classes have the largest frequency and are separated by at least uh, one other class. I think two separate distributions are happening here. So notice here, I kind of have two humps of data. If I were to take the average, okay, notice it's kind of like, oh, well, I have a high value at 180 here and I have a high value of uh, what about 145. Um, I don't have a real average. If I were to actually calculate the average, the average would probably be 160 body mass, but but notice that um, isn't where most of the data is. So bimodal just means that two different things, um, two different distributions are occurring. Okay, and that completes uh, talking about types of variables, um, graphical displays, and shapes of graphs.